Rahul sir, shall we proceed? Yes sir. Say sir, sir. Yes sir. Okay. Start. Good morning to one and all present here with great joy and immense excitation. I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all present here for the second day of three days FDP conducted by the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering and Association of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. I cordially welcome Dr. C. Vivekanandan sir, Professor and Head of the SNH Department, Dr. NGP Institute of Technology, Coimbatore. Participants, our mathematics professor, Dr. P. Sendhil Kumar, has passed away due to COVID. Let us take a moment to pray for his soul to rest in peace. For a minute, I would request everyone to stay quiet.
thank you all now i kindly request dr s jagannathan professor and head department of electrical and electronics engineering to say a few words thank you karunya so very good morning to all for this uh, second day faculty development program so today's session will be a what a so wonderful session landed by dr c vivekananda sir professor red and senior professor of our college uh, he is a person uh, he is a kind auto uh, supported person he is a uh, expertise in uh, electrical field so i think uh, today session will be a lot of uh, informative sessions and i wish you all for this uh, second day session uh, so karunya please take me. thank you sir dr c vivekanandan sir who is a professor and head of the sns department has completed his bachelor's degree masters and also phd at coimbatore institute of technology coimbatore sir has a cumulative experience of more than 30 years he has also awarded with excellence in teaching by the lions club of coimbatore he has also published more than 36 international journals seven national conferences 20 international conferences and 10 consultancy project now i kindly request dr c vivekanandan sir to take over the session thank you karunya highly respected head of uh, Deputy Department of the uh, Energy Institute of Technology, Dr. Jagannath, Convener of the SDP, Dr. K. Ramesh Kumar, Coordinators, uh, Mr. R. B. Silva Kumar and uh, Mr. J. Rahul Kumar, beloved professors from other institutions. Uh, very warm good morning to one and all. <clears throat> so uh, though i am basically an electrical professor presently i am serving as uh, head of the department of smh at dr ngp institute institute of technology and uh, dr p sendil kumar who is associated associated with me for more than uh, six years uh, even more than seven years right from uh, the I mean, sns college of technology we are working together at uh, dr ngp for the past two years uh, he is uh, my best companion because he is a bit closer to my age uh, comparing others they are they are all very young chaps he is uh, a bit closer to my age so he was my best companion at uh, dr ngp and we were sharing a lot of things every day normally we meet uh, in the morning by 8:30 at our uh, in my room and uh, we have some chat for about 15 20 minutes about uh, all issues politics politics uh, academics uh, students family and a lot and he he reported uh, some cough and uh, fever before uh, just before a month and he was admitted in a local hospital there for about a week or 10 days uh, he developed uh, breathing issues respiratory problems uh, so he was then admitted into esa hospital until then uh, till he was admitted even after admi- i mean uh, after admitted in esa hospital uh, we were I mean, we were uh, we send messages uh, through whatsapp and once in a while uh, we come over phone also and uh, after three or four days at uh, esa a doctor called me her da- daughter called me and reported that he was so critical so he was immediately shifted to cmch uh, with the help of our benevolent uh, madam Uh, Dr. Dawmani Kalan Shami. Uh, he was admitted in KM, KMCH, and he was uh, in ICU for about 10-15 days. And he was given uh, first-class treatment by uh, doctor, by doctors of uh, KMCH, under the guidance of uh, our respected secretary, madam. But unfortunately, uh, in fact, before three days, I was talking to her uh, daughter. she is she said that uh, he was improving but unfortunately this morning uh, the message came that he is no more it's a great loss to me personally and uh, loss to the academics he is a very good professor a high uh, time hearted professor 
In fact, I wanted to refine my presentation this morning, but I couldn't because of this. So, with the grief, chicken uh, and heavy heart, I'm handling this session. If you struggle, if you fumble in between, please uh, bear with me for, for the known reasons. So, let me start my presentation. Yes, sir. Rahul, sir, please remove one person. Rahul, sir. Yes, sir, I'm I'm presenting, sir. Please. Rahul, sir, remove one. He is presenting, sir. I, 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 yes. I, I, okay. have, I have come, sir. I yes, sir. I saw the screen from him. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. So, I at outset I thank uh, Dr. Jagannathan and his team uh, for bestowing this wonderful opportunity to be amidst you and to discuss something about uh, the state feedback control uh, and uh, its application in power electronics. So, most, most of my, uh, my presentation today will cover a state feedback control, which is a generalized one. Uh, this is not applicable not only for power electronics, this is applicable for every engineering field right from robotics, uh, mechanics, uh, uh, design of systems, uh, and uh, control of power, and whatnot. Um, it is applicable for almost every system, including economical, social, uh, social, uh, plenty of systems, OK? So let me give you an overview, a bird's eye view on state feedback control first, and uh, go for uh, uh, a simple application in um, power electronics. Uh, my plan is to present uh, the application of state feedback control in uh, single phase hedge bridge uh, full wave uh, rectifier, full wave wing matter. Okay. So, coming to um, systems, as an engineer, we in general want to expect a system uh, to meet our specifications, to meet our needs. Specification means our needs, right? To meet our needs. So, uh, in general, for every, every engineering system, we have uh, got some specifications. We, in general, analyze a system either in time domain or in frequency domain. Uh, this state model is a pure time domain analysis. So, let me talk about uh, the time domain specifications. So, the first time domain specification is race time. I'll come to the later. Uh, what is race time and peak time and all. Of course, you may be knowing this. Uh, nothing wrong in overweighing it. Uh, peak overshoot, settling time, and steady state error. These are all the major time domain specifications. Uh, I can even say this peak overshoot, settling time, and steady state error. Last three are uh, the, the major criteria uh, in designing uh, your time domain uh, system. And uh, whenever we design a system, we want the system to be stable uh, in the sense it has to work as we, as we expected as per our design and without uh, getting stalled or without getting um, what um, exploded, okay? So the, sh the system should not uh, die or system should not misbehave uh, during the operations. So that's called system stability. And uh, there are uh, some um, specifications on system stability. Uh, it is called absolute uh, stability, marginal stability, unconditional stability. And we, we have, of course, uh, MIBO stability and other stability aspects, uh, which we will not uh, go into that because our concern is only about uh, this uh, thing, or as far as power of money, or our engineering defense concern. So absolutely stable in the sense, the system will be stable uh, with respect to a particular parameter, uh, irrespective of the value of the parameter. That parameter may change from zero to infinity that parameter can take any value because when we talk about parameter, it can be only positive value. So it can take any value between zero and infinity. The system should not malfunction, okay? Whatever be the value of the system, the system should behave as per our design and as per our requirement. And that's called as absolutely stable. 
and second one marginally stable of course the first one is uh, is never possible you know if you take a resistor if you take a voltage source and if you take a current you can never expect the resistor to behave uh, normally irrespective of the applied voltage at one stage it will uh, burn out okay so absolute uh, stay absolute stability is only a theoretical criteria so that's not there uh, marginally stable is uh, the system is said to be at the verge of stability uh, we say we cannot uh, say the system is stable or system is unstable so it is like something like cat on the wall okay so it may jump either this side or that side uh, based on uh, the environmental conditions and uh, perturbations in uh, the system parameter values and coming to conditional stability which is uh, by and large uh, is a practical uh, stability uh, control uh, con conditional stability the system will be stable only for the pre i mean the predefined range of that parameter okay so the parameter value exceeds that or the parameter value comes below this the system may not uh, perform as per your uh, design specification okay you know uh, normally when we design a system we linearize the system okay the system all the systems are highly non linear we design we design uh, for the system to operate around an operating point and we linearize the system around the operating point so as long as uh, you are you are uh, the system uh, parameters are bounded between uh, this linear range upper bound and lower bound the system will behave uh, as per your design or as per calculation and once it overshoots or undershoots your predefined values the system may become erratically the system may malfunction the system may even collapse okay i can recall uh, that uh, occ what we do for our uh, dc shunt generator normally what we do we draw a occ curve which is an exponential curve and we draw a tangent which is passing through origin okay so the objective of trying that on uh, the tangent which is passing through origin is we are trying to linearize that okay the system will behave linearly uh, i mean about certain range i cannot draw it because i have no specific list to draw so you can re recall so that uh, that straight line will align with the graph only for certain portion okay so based on that only we go for uh, speed control of uh, thing or torque control or whatever it may be okay so as long as your system works within the range Uh, your output will be satisfactory once uh, the operating range overshoots or un undershoots the range your system will not behave properly so that's why it is conditionally stable within the range the system will perform pro properly so all our designs uh, all our power plant designs are in general all our engineering designs will come under this conditionally stable category only okay and if you talk about stability and in control system point of view the stability is based on the location of the close to poles uh, poles you know the the roots of the denominator polynomial of the mathematical model of uh, your system okay when uh, whatever be the system uh, as an engineer we develop mathematical model for that for example if you take uh, if you take this equation r into i plus ln into di by dt plus 1 by c integral i dt equal to v is the mathematical model of your uh, rls series circuit like is we can develop uh, the model for any given circuit it may be a simple equation or a more complex equations maybe some uh, fine tuning equations that will describe a single system that depends on number of components involved number of energy storing elements involved and uh, the the complexity of the system as well i can say okay so if you take those mathematical uh, models uh, and if you take transfer function model what we do we write output uh, trans i mean uh, laplace of output variable divided by left of left uh, laplace of input variable uh, laplace of input variable uh, that then we we get the numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial and the roots of the denominator polynomial are the poles of the system and the poles uh, uh, the location of the poles determine the stability of uh, the system and uh, when all the poles of the system uh, it may be if the system may have three poles or five poles or 10 poles even 20 poles uh, that depends on the complexity of the system what will be the number of the poles if the poles are located on the left uh, side or uh, the negative uh, side of my real axis or if the poles have a negative real uh, value uh, then the system is uh, stable otherwise the system is unstable okay let us see the response uh, of the systems so, uh, let's talk about only the poles which are lying on uh, the left of a s plane because once you take uh, the poles which are lying on the right of a s plane uh, it will be e power t e power at for example 
so e power at when t increases uh, that the power will increase so it will reach infinity so e power infinity will be infinity and on the other hand if you take if the roles the poles are on the negative side it will be e power minus at so when uh, t increases it will approach minus infinity which is zero the system is stable okay so if uh, if you take only the um, the poles lying on the negative half cycle sorry the left side of the s plane uh, you have real axis poles that is the poles will be uh, on uh, the real axis and what you see on your uh, right top is the impulse response of uh, that poles okay and the second one the poles may be at origin so the poles may be at origin it is a bit tricky issue uh, poles at origin okay uh, and uh, the response simple response of the system will be like this will be exponentially falling down to zero this is impulse response and if you take complex conjugate poles uh, poles are uh, you know, complex conjugate pairs because whenever the poles are complex it will be uh, a complex pair complex conjugate poles the response impulse response will be oscillatory as we see uh, the the third graph okay i'll explain and again another uh, criteria which defines uh, the system performance is how the system response will be will be with respect to time okay again uh, this depends on uh, the type of the poles okay uh, there are three types of damping so a system may be critically damped uh, system may be over damped or system may be under damped okay uh, let me see the graphs of those systems the blue one that is data one what you see right now on your screen uh, is uh, under damped system uh, the immediate next one which is below that uh, data two is over damped systems and uh, the last one is uh, under damped systems okay which system we will choose because all these uh, depends on the location of the poles because when you take your oscillatory response the poles must be complex conjugate when it is a critical response or it is over damped response the poles must be uh, real okay on the real axis on the sense you no know, imaginary part and which type we will we will select and if you select the last one under damped if you see the system response the system response is so slow the system is so sluggish and it takes longer time to reach the the steady state i'm sorry longer time to reach the steady state okay so the system is so slow okay and if you take the uh, one which is on uh, the middle one the system raises sharply and it reaches uh, the final value the steady state value uh, with in lesser time comparing this this is the faster response am right the middle one is the faster response it, it is reaching uh, uh, the the steady state value earlier than uh, the other two systems and if you take the third system the third system is bit oscillatory and it is certainly it is uh, better than um, the third one uh, but it is not as good as the middle one okay these three so the responses what normally we have uh, so if you want to which one you will choose all these three are possible or possible practically i am talking only about a stable system so all these three are possible for a stable system so which response we will select is the big question okay so if you take this middle one this critical response it is it is very difficult uh, practically very difficult to achieve this uh, critical response because if you take your rls series circuit your critical response which is uh, controlled by the damping factor is a function of your resistance capacitance and inductance so unless service you are able to select the proper values for your r l and c uh, you will not be able to achieve this critical damping and even if you are able to achieve uh, exact values that are required to achieve this critical damping it may not be constant due to environmental conditions maybe the the moisture uh, in the air or uh, the temperature environment temperature or other factors uh, will influence uh, these values and there will be a drift in the values so that your system will be no longer critically damped you remove either upper or lower okay and uh the third one or which one, which one is the top is uh, under damped which is oscillatory but as long as these oscillations are well in uh, control we can accept it so uh, for uh, these reasons all other practical systems are uh, under damped systems it uh, doesn't mean all all systems are 100% under damped we do have systems with uh, over damped for example if you take your lift operations or if you take your uh, door operations these are all uh, under this uh, under damped operations sorry over damped operations where the response is supposed to be very sluggish or supposed to be very slow okay 
and so um, uh, what they have concluded is a system must be uh, under damped okay in, even in power system also or in your power electrons also we design the system to be under damped and in this concept uh, say a system uh, may not uh, have, may not be containing only your uh, complex poles a system by nature inherently it may have uh, complex poles it may have uh, uh, poles at origin or it may have uh, real axis poles as i said we are concerned only about this type of systems okay yes so for a stable system we have uh, plenty of poles and for example if you take a complex poles it will co contribute uh, this oscillator nature during your transients and if you take your real axis poles they will contribute uh, Uh, the the exponential response during transients and so your transient response of a system is the sum algebraic sum of these individual contributions okay so your pole may give the exponential response your pole per complex pole per pair give you uh, oscillatory response there are two or three complex poles they will give three different oscillations and your final response of the system will be the algebraic sum of um, those uh, responses at any given point of time so if this is the case uh, we cannot decide how the system should respond because when we try to adjust one the other uh, pole may get affected and uh, when their poles are much closer to each other the response will be so clumsy so we may not it is and it is very difficult for us to uh, decide how our system uh, to respond or rather uh, how to make our system to respond as per our uh, specifications so that's why we get into the concept called a uh, dominant poles okay um so these poles dominant poles you know um, the stable systems the poles will be only on the left of a s plane we have uh, several poles on the left of a s plane and and the first condition is uh, the dominant poles are the poles which are closer to your imaginary uh, sorry imaginary axis which are closer to your imaginary axis okay Uh, so uh, poles which are closer to the imaginary uh, are are called or maybe uh, the dominant poles with the condition the second condition is displayed over here uh, so remaining poles okay should have the real part at least 5 to 10 times that of your uh, pole which is closer to your uh, imaginary axis okay so unless there is this condition satisfied you cannot uh, claim that uh, the pole which is closer to Uh, the uh, major axis is a dominant pole because uh, the other poles which are closer to that may also uh, provide dominant uh, responses okay now let us take this example uh, so there are two poles uh, which are real axis poles uh, which is uh, one pole is at minus 2 and one pole is at minus 10 okay uh, we have two poles and uh, uh, now this uh, yeah, the pole which is at minus 2 uh, is a dominant pole as per this is considered because the next pole is uh, minus uh, at minus 10 which is sufficiently farther away from your uh, first pole okay now let us see how the system uh, behavior and why we call this as dominant poles okay now let me open Uh, the file which i have created for this no i think uh, you can see a yeah, file it is a matlab uh, command window what i have opened and uh, you see i have uh, defined this first system which is g1 this is my system what you have seen which is given by 1 by uh, s plus 2 into s plus 10 this is the pole uh, uh, system what i have defined and i have uh, taken the response of these two poles uh, independently so for first pole and if you do your partial fraction and all the rest of the first first pole is 1 by 8 and that of the second pole is minus 1 by 8 so the first pole is minus uh, 1 by 8 in s plus 2 and the second pole is uh, minus 1 by 8 by s plus 10 okay now let me run this and let me load this uh, um, things so the project is run let me view its response using the lti viewer so lti viewer is getting loaded yeah it's there now let me import those two systems here so this is g all the systems g11 uh, g12 that is subsystems and g1 is the uh, overall system of course now we can see three graphs on your screen okay the red one the blue one and the yellow one and let me add uh, the the legends so that you can understand 
yeah we got the legend okay so the blue one is g1 that is your uh, first or the, or the overall system right and the red one is g11 that is your g what g11 g11 is this one right your uh, the pole which is closer to your uh, what your imaginary axis and g12 is the pole which is farther away from the imaginary axis uh, whose response is given in this uh, yellow line okay is it yellow so it is yellow line okay now if you see the blue response is the overall response when both the poles are acting together and the red response is the response only when the first pole is uh, acting and uh, the yellow response is the response only the pole which is farther away from your imaginary pole is act acting and you see the response the, the actual response is much closer to your uh, this response which responds uh, this uh, pole which is closer to your uh, imaginary axis okay and if you see the transient res transient response the transient is up to this am right let me add uh, this settling so settling time so the, the duration from this say this to, to this is the settling time during which the transient is purely dictated by this red am right because this yellow the, the oscillations in the yellow has died off after say 0.4 seconds whereas the transient is, is extended up to 2. Point, uh, around 2 seconds so the transient of the first one the pole which is farther away from the imaginary axis dies out at 0.4 seconds and from 0.4 to uh, 2 seconds approximately the transient response is completely under the control of this uh, blue or, uh, sorry the red which is your system uh, you know, which is closer to your uh, imaginary axis or the dominant pole okay so the transient response of the system is completely dictated by the pole which is closer to your imaginary axis than the pole which is further away from the imaginary axis but of course you know uh, the settling time is uh, 2 zeta by sorry settling time is 4 by zeta omega n or 3 by zeta omega n let us take this 4 by zeta omega n for 95 percent uh, category sorry 90 percent category so this 4 by zeta omega n, this zeta omega n is the real part of the pole, am I right? Whether it may be a complex pole, it may be a real axis pole. The zeta omega n is the magnitude of uh, the, 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 the real part of the pole. And your settling time depends on the real part. It is 4 by zeta omega n, or the settling time is inversely proportional to uh, the real part of the poles. Uh, inversely proportional to the real part of the poles. So if you take this pole, this pole which is this uh, G12, for which it is 10 so it is 4 by 10 so uh, so that is the settling time 4 by 10 uh, what is the settling time let me check it it is 0.4 am right approximately at 0.4 it settles and if you take this uh, it is 2 by 10 fine uh, so it is 2 by sorry it is 1 by 4 by 2 it is 4 uh, 4 by zeta omega n it is 4 by 2 so approximately at 2 seconds it settles am right approximately 2 seconds it settles okay uh, so uh, the transient response, because as as a system engineer, we are very much concerned about the transient response uh, than our uh, statistic response. Because during transients, if you take even if your simple RSS circuits, RSS series circuits, uh, uh, the uh, please hold on, please hold on, one moment.
sorry for the interruptions uh, because i had a call from uh, sindhul kumar sir's daughter so i had to attend very sorry so coming back to our discussions uh, let's go so so i uh, coming back to discussions so the entire transient response is dictated by the pole which is closer to the imaginary axis okay so that's why it is called dominant pole uh, dominant means it is its uh, operating its contribution is dominating during the transient response that's uh, clear from this uh, figure okay let's go back and continue for a minute okay so uh, that's what this and again when you take this uh, this is a better uh, tricky case which is what we are very much interested because as we said as i said earlier uh, we design our system to be more uh, transient or oscillatory uh, than uh, the exp- I mean, exponential response unless or when it is demanding we never go for this uh, sluggish or exponential response we design only with the oscillatory response so let's take an example uh, with a system with uh, a pole which is the uh, real pole uh, and another pole uh, a pair of poles which are complex conjugate so when we do partial fraction uh, we get uh, this uh, this is for uh, the the first part or your comp- I mean, real axis pole and this is for the complex pole and we'll see how the uh, the response of this system and let me go and load uh, this example 2 uh, okay so uh, i have defined the first system which is the overall system which is for g2 that is example 2 that's why i defined it as g2 uh, this is 1 by s plus 10 into s square plus 2s plus 5 and this is uh, the the first part of this subsystem for first subsystem which is uh, having only uh, the real part and this is uh, the section which is having only the complex poles and we'll see how the system behaves uh, for this okay and let's load those systems all the three systems and we'll see how the response is okay so let me read the current state let me take the peak response second time because i'm sorry this is running as a previous i'm sorry for example to which let me run this let me run this first run let me take the cheat Okay. Okay. Let me take G two. Hmm. Let's see. Let's start with G two. So the system is that. So G two one, G two two, G two one. Yeah. G. So uh, we have this complex pole and uh, real axis pole. Now let me go and uh, do this analysis. I'll go here. And if you see, let me load the systems. Import uh, this all these the systems. And let me get the addresses. Speak response. Um, Change uh, time. Check it. And let me to have uh, the the complement legend. So again, uh, there are uh, can see uh, uh, three responses. the first one the blue one is g2 that is the overall response what you see on the top topmost is the overall response uh, the middle one that is g21 which is in uh, some sort of uh, brown color right a gray color whatever it is so that is your uh, the response of this so this one this one right this green is this this which is this so this is the response of g21 that is your um, pole which is close to your imaginary axis and g22 which is uh, the, the the slight brown color okay and if you can see so this is your, so this is my settling time so this is uh, the uh, settling time is 0.3.83 seconds for g2 and uh, this is the settling time for g22 which is uh, uh, again almost 3.84 
okay and if you take the peak overshoot uh, peak overshoot is for g22 that is your uh, the the second order system is uh, point zero two three, and for this G two one is the G two is the overall system, which is point zero two four. So uh, it is almost following. Uh, this is your overall response is almost or ninety nine point nine percent matching with your uh, second order uh, the the pole uh, which is closer to your imaginary axis. So that is your dominant pole. So this is the dominant pole. G uh, two uh, two two is the uh, is the dominant pole. Uh, for G2, okay. So G22 is this the uh, relaxes pole, okay, fine. And uh, the advantage of this, the concept of this, we will see uh, next. Okay, fine. And now let us get into the stretchless analysis, uh, which is of course uh, the, the x dot x plus b u y equal to c x plus d u, where x is your state vector, uh, your v is input vector, y is output vector. A is input matrix. Uh, sorry, A is system matrix. B is input matrix. C is output matrix, and D is fractal matrix. And for all fractal cases, B will be uh, almost zero because B couples your input and output directly, which is which should not happen. Uh, so um, that D is almost zero for every purpose. And this is the block diagram of your uh, state uh, space system. A given state space system. You know. Yeah, by default, your state space system is an open loop system because you are, you are, there, there is no uh, feedback. Okay, this only this if you take this, this is only internal. Okay, and this is not a feedback of signals. This is for realization of system. It is not feedback. Um, no signals are feedback. We re try to realize the system, so you cannot claim this as a feedback. So you know, you see, you see no uh, variables. Uh, feedback in the sense that should be taken back and compared with uh, the signals or input signals in general. So no, uh, in neither output nor uh, other uh, states are taken back and compared with you. So by default, your state space system is an open system. Okay? So this uh, diagram is tells that. And uh, coming to, I am not going deep into the analysis of uh, state uh, model, and let us come directly to the controllability concept. So controllability, if you want, if you say when the system is completely controllable, okay, uh, say your system is having some uh, n state vector. And you will have, uh, say, two inputs or one input, whatever it may be. Okay. So, if you are able to influence uh, those state, all the state vectors, all the n state vectors, if you are able to influence uh, all the n state vectors by applying uh, a controlled input, a controlled vector, yeah, because we show on one input with a controlled vector, by applying a controlled vector over a finite period of time, then the system is said to be completely controllable in the sense by giving an unconstrained input you should be able to influence all the uh, states maybe directly or indirectly in the sense your input may influence your state uh, variable directly or it may indirectly so for example if, if you give an input u whether u1 that u1 may in mean, uh, say i mean disturb say uh, x3 x3 in turn may disturb x1 x1 in turn may disturb x4 okay so like this X4 is also getting affected by the changes in U. Okay, so either directly or indirectly, if you're able to influence all the state vectors by applying a control vector, uh, then the system is going to be completely controllable. Again, uh, a state variable may not be um, uh, affected by one input. There are more than one inputs. But if it is affected by the second input, that's also good. Okay, So one way or the other, by applying an input, you must be able to influence the state vector, uh, all, these, all the state variables. That is called your controllability. Okay, that's uh, the, the general definition is given out here. And how to make whether the system is completely controllable or not is by the help of the so called controllable matrix, which is given by M into B, A, B, A, square B, where A is your system matrix and B is your input matrix. And another concept is called observability, which is also equally important. But uh, I mean, uh, for this presentation, let me skip this observability. Okay, let me give an overview. Observ observability means so you know, so in practical systems, uh, you may not be able to tap all these state variables. Uh, the reason is uh, one thing: the state variable may not be available for measurement. Uh, for example, if you take your um, DC motor, uh, say your EB, that EMF is one of the state variables. We can never measure with EB. That's no one, right? So that is not measurable. Number one. And the second cause, second cause is 
the sensors are too costly to measure it okay the sensor which is available to sense a particular uh, state variable may be much much costlier and you may not be able to afford it and uh, that is second case uh, where you cannot go for direct measurement of your state variables and the third case and the uh, measured state variable may be polluted by noise which is unavoidable uh, maybe due to the inherent nature of the system uh, the measured state variable uh, influenced by high noise so it is very difficult to filter out the noise because we may not know which one is the noise signal which one is the actual signal and uh, parameter signal and so we now we may not be able to uh, spare our time and energy to identify Uh, which one is the correct signal and uh, by applying uh, some uh, different type of filters and all again that's pulled out okay so in those cases uh, but of course output is always available whatever be the system if you give the input output should be available otherwise we cannot uh, take it as a system so output is always available and in most of the cases output will be one of the state variables uh, you can recall that output will be one of the state variables in most most of the cases though it is not mandatory so if you uh, um, always our output is available for measurement so by measuring the output over finite period of time if we are able to estimate all the state variables then the system is to be observable okay by measuring the output for a finite period of time uh, if it is possible to extract the information or estimate uh, all the state variables then uh, it is uh, the system is completely observable So it is only possible when your output contains the information about the states. Then another issue I will not go into that. Okay, so why we do this is uh, the next concept. What you are going to see the state feedback. So if you want to have successful or uh, useful or efficient state feedback, uh, you must be able to uh, get all the state variables so that you can implement uh, the state uh, feedback control. But as I said, because of one reason or the other, the state variables may not be available for feedback. in that case we go for observers state observers maybe uh, full order observers or reduced order observers full order observers means whether it is available or not we are going to estimate the state variables reduced order observers we uh, measure only the uh, state variables which are not available for measurement okay you can go for either one of this and we get the uh, state variables uh, from the output we measure the output and we estimate the state variables and these estimated state variables are used for state feedback okay uh, that's uh, that's enough i okay, will go to next and uh, this is called the state feedback uh, scenario okay so now this one by s is integrated and all you know this is based the which one is in gray area is uh, the the normal uh, state model and what we have done we have taken all the state variables okay and we multiply it by a constant then uh, okay and we add it with your input uh, or to get the input for your state model okay r is your reference input u is the input for the state model in the previous case okay in the i mean not previous case in the, so u is r minus uh, k into x am right so u is r minus k into x so this this structure is called state feedback control okay and uh, normally there are two types of controls as you are aware of one is called tracking and another one is called regulation okay now uh, tracking in the sense uh, when the input is changed output is also changed it has to follow the input output has to follow the input for example uh, when you drive a car if you give more throttle the car should move fast and when you apply the brake uh, brake the car uh, should uh, come down and similarly uh, that's called your tracking and uh, regulation if you take And you say well, you might have come across the voltage regulators seven eight zero five and seven eight zero five seven eight one two and all. So these voltage regulators are um, are um, are fixed at the output end of your uh, rectifier. So this voltage regulator input may be fluctuating. There are two things: uh, input may be fluctuating, and there are uh, input perturbations, and uh, there may be changes in output load current. Irrespective of the input perturbations and the output load current, the output voltage should remain constant in the sense you are regulating it, right? So that's uh, so there are, there are two major classifications of control systems. Now what you see right now on your screen is a, a, a regulator, a regulator problem. Okay, because there is no input, and we try to maintain the system output, which is Y, which is not here, of course, Y, uh, to um, what uh, to meet our uh, specifications. Okay, that's what I go on here. And uh, when you apply your mathematical uh, knowledge, uh, your x dot, your r equal to zero, so e equal to minus k into x. Okay, 
the free escape which is C. So it is minus. So this minus is got and put over here. So this will be plus. So R is zero. So having that in mind, you can see this. You can get this plot diagram. So when you do simple uh, mathematical um, uh, operations, what you get will be x dot equal to a into x plus b into k into x. This is very clear from this figure. So I can see a minus b k into x. Okay. So this is the equation of the state feedback system. And you know there is no input. So input is missing. So it is an autonomous system. Uh, uh, the unforced system, uh, that is right first, this unforced system. So the roots of this are the eigenvalues of this A minus BK uh, are going to determine the system response. Eigenvalues are, of course, are nothing but uh, the roots of the denominator polynomial or the eigenvector, eigenvalues are the poles of the system. And uh, this is a very simple concept. So eigenvalues are the pole, eigenvalues of A minus BK are the poles of, the closed loop poles of this uh, feedback system. You know, the system has become, it's become feedback. Earlier I said it was an open loop system. Now with the help of this, it has become closed loop system, okay? So now A minus BK dictates the mm, response of the system because uh, the A minus BK, the roots of A minus BK are the poles of the system. Uh, the poles determine the system uh, response and so, a minus BK as a whole determines the system response. So A is fixed because the system matrix we cannot change. B is also fixed, which is the output input matrix which we cannot change. So the only available uh, freedom is in this parameter, which is K. So by properly selecting K, we can make the system uh, to, um, to comply with our specification. That is the objective. Okay. Um, so, if you want to apply the state feedback, uh, the one condition is, as I said, all the state variables must be available. In the sense, the, the controllability matrix M, what we have seen here, the controllability matrix M, uh, the rank of this should be equal to the number of state variables or uh, the rank of uh, your, uh, or the order of your A, okay? So, that is the first uh, condition. Uh, only when this is uh, satisfied, you can go for the state with the control. Okay. So now we have our system and we have certain specifications. Okay. Now we have to design your state feedback control so that the system comply with our specifications. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so as I said, uh, with the from the given specifications, we can decide uh, where the poles should be and for the poles we can uh, generate our k. That's what we are going to see next. Okay. So the first one is uh, to determine the values of uh, k on the state uh, feedback matrix k. That's called uh, gain matrix also. That's feedback gain matrix or state feedback matrix. Uh, so which are calculated using uh, the coefficients of the given system and the coefficients of the uh, the, the uh, the specified system, okay, or uh, what system, or how the system should respond, okay. So when you have this, you can easily get this by using your uh, SA minus A, right, SA minus A. So this can be obtained by SA minus A, where A is your character, sorry, A is your given matrix, capital A I'm talking about, capital A is your, your system matrix, by doing SA minus A, you'll get this equation. So this is your, uh, uh, for example, I have taken a third order system, so for third order system, uh, this is your
so the, i mean from the given matrix uh, from the uh, from the given system we can get uh, this characteristic equation okay so uh, we are, we are concerned about uh, these coefficients a1 a2 a3 and uh, from the desired uh, for the desired system we have to get the characteristic equation you know uh, for the given specifications uh, we can decide where the port should be and uh, the ports we can get mu1 mu2 mu3 and from this we perform s plus mu1 s plus mu2 or s minus mu1 or whatever it may be and we get uh, the characteristic equation of the uh, desired system and the coefficients are given as alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 if you know this your k is given by this alpha 3 minus a3 alpha 2 minus a2 alpha 1 minus a1 this is the k matrix of your system this is one of the methods and the second method uh, of course the uh, equivalent math, math, math lab command is k equal to place a comma b comma p where a is your system matrix is n by n matrix b is your n by 1 matrix for your one single input system p is the uh, poles where you want to have your uh, desired system how the system should respond so this is your uh, matlab command to implement this method and the second method is called akamens formula which is given by uh, for a third order system 001 m inverse uh, into phi of a where 001 is the matrix Okay, so Ackermann's formula, which is given by K, and this is your normal uh, row matrix. M is the thing what we have seen earlier, that is your uh, uh, controllability matrix that is given by this. Uh, yeah, the, so this is your, uh, this is what you see, this is your M. So you can get your M. So uh, we have M, and then finally we have your yeah, phi of A. If it phi of A is, so you know. Uh, this, uh, you know, your characteristic equation of the desired system, what we have seen here. This is the characteristic equation of the desired system. Uh, this last one, S3, S cube into alpha on S into alpha on S cube on S square, because I'm sorry, um, S square is missing here. This is S square, uh, alpha on S square plus alpha to S plus alpha 3. So uh, you substitute your A here, okay? That is your phi of A, okay? So when you do this, you will get your K. It is a bit uh, complex uh, mathematically, but there is a simple method in uh, MATLAB using this Acker formula. Again, uh, the parameters are A, B, and P. But instead of place, you give Acker. So you will get your K matrix. And once it is there, you will go for it. And this is a simple example of what I have taken before going for the actual implementation power electronics. Uh, this is a simple math. So this is in controllable form. So there is no need to check your controllability. And uh, so for these two systems, uh, the SA minus A. And this is uh, so. Uh, this is the character situation of uh, the given system. Uh, so a one equal to uh, six, a equal to five, and a equal to one. 
and now let us check the dissociation system so the given complex abelian specifications are zeta should be 0.5 in the sampling time of uh, 2 seconds so you know a sampling time equal to 4 4 by z omega n Four base it omega n, uh, so on omega n, uh, yeah, say equal to point five. From these two, I can get uh, value of omega n equal to four radians per second. So dominant parts will be minus zeta omega n plus or minus the omega d as I said, the real parts of uh, the pole. Okay, so which is at the minus two plus or minus j two p. So now we have uh, concluded when the poles, uh, complex poles are this, I'll get this specifications. I'll comply with this specification. Okay, so I have to take my third pole because the system is third order. So I have to my take third pole at uh, five to ten times to the right of uh, sorry to the left of my available pole, so complex pole or uh, dominant pole. So which is uh, minus two. So I have selected minus ten. You can take anything between minus ten to minus twenty. You may ask why can't I have minus fifty or minus hundred or minus two hundred, wherein uh, the the response or the contribution will be almost zero. But when you have uh, your poles. Uh, Further away, very further away, uh, over your uh, left half of the S-plane, the system will be highly prone to your noise. You can see that uh, the, the, when you take your Bode plot uh, after uh, once it crosses zero dB line, uh, and after three dB line, uh, your bandwidth, sorry, not bandwidth, yeah, yeah. Uh, after three dB line, it will has to fall sharply. But when you have poles further away from your imaginary axis, it will be somewhat uh, lesser uh, slope. So it will be highly prone to noise. So it is not advisable to go for uh, poles with higher uh, noise relax. Okay. So uh, this I have got my mu one, mu two, mu three. So when you do your this process, mu one n into mu one plus s into mu two plus s into mu, because this has become plus because this value is minus. That's why I said this is minus or plus. So what this is what I get. So this is the Cartan equation of the Dessert system from which I can say alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, which is fourteen fifty six or one sixty respectively. Okay, now let me go and check uh, uh, the the performance uh, with the back lab. So let me load example three. Uh, example three is loaded here. So this is my example three. No, this is my example three. I have got uh, a matrix which is zero one zero 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 one minus one minus one minus six. V equal to zero zero one. Your column is there, uh, and uh, this I am doing this process. I do not want to go deep into this. Uh, I'm 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 I mean, converting this for printing process. And this is the initial condition. What I have assumed. Of course, this was taken from the data. I can refer to that. And I have extracted uh, the state variable, and I am plotting it. This is for uncompensated system. And the second one, a second plot. So uh, here I am finding my k value using uh, the uh, what. Uh, A place command. Uh, my poles are defined here. P is equal to minus two plus or minus uh, j two uh, root three and minus ten poles are defined here. And I am uh, calculating my k and I am defining uh, the desired system or this is uh, what uh, defined as my system and all. And uh, this is over here. Let me run this. Okay. Now if you see the plot. Where is the plot? Plot is missing. Let me run. What's the plot? Plot is missing. What do you mean? Let me try with this. Is there an error? Should choose the main one.
so it is not running so this is what i please hold on so fine uh, so there is uh, there is uh, there is another uh, so let me correct it and uh, send it to you later because i have no time to correct it so fine so this is how uh, we design our systems this will work this will work i'll i'll show you um, Time comes after some time. Let me go get into that uh, major thing, which is uh, design of uh, 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 how to design your uh, alternate circuits using this. Okay, so this is the circuit, very simple circuit, which is uh, for your uh, single bridge, uh, single phase, full bridge uh, rectifier. Okay, H bridge rectifier. And this is your single phase rectifier, and this is your PLL to generate your. Uh, Signals, apply signals, and this uses this regard uh, and gives you reference signals, and that is given to your thing. And this is all uh, this LC filter, and this is your grid connector load, and all those things. And if you run this, this is getting compiled. Uh, let's wait for some time. So 50, 70 percent, 80 percent, like this and so on. So if you see, this is the response. This is the response of uh, uh, the system. So I have defined for. Uh, so this is the response. So this one is your, uh, uh, you know, uh, that is your grid voltage, inverter voltage, grid current, inverter current. Okay, these are all four parameters: grid voltage, inverter voltage, grid current, inverter current. Okay, and this is inverter current. This is a grid current. This is a grid voltage and this is your inverter voltage. This is what I get. I am not concerned about this. Let me take the pulse. See, if you take the pulse, okay. And this is how the pulse look like. Okay, um, and, uh, okay. This I think you are all aware of. So this is your triggering pulse. I am concerned about this triggering pulse. Okay. Now, what I have done, I have. Uh, so you take this circuit. So it is really the same. It is similar to your previous circuit, except that. I have used this state feedback controller. This is the state feedback controller, which I have used here. This is your previous one, it is still there. This is the first circuit is intact. What I have done is I have added this uh, to this thing. Okay. Now the pulses are generated. See the pulses are coming over here. Okay. This is your uh, given to your PW inverter. Here it is given from uh, your previous controller. Here it is given from this is your uh, PAD, sorry, your, your state feedback controller. And this is your control gain matrix. So this is where you're supposed to enter your matrix values, K values, and all those things. Okay. Uh, I haven't designed it because I was to design, uh, design this values this morning, but uh, couldn't because of the known reasons. So this is by default uh, you're having something. And let's see what it comes, what what you get. So so no, uh, this uh, I have taken uh, the state variables uh, directly from uh, the system. Okay. Here, what is my state variable? Here, I have taken the grid variable is I mean, uh, yes, uh, sorry, not uh, grid variable as the reference. Okay, we, we have to give the reference. The grid variable is given as the reference. This is your R input, and uh, the state variable x and the output are my um, uh, filter outputs. Okay, so that is your 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 uh, H bridge inverter. Then you have LC filter. The output of the LC filter. The voltage is given as my output and also the state variable. Okay, I have taken only one state variable in this case, and let me check the uh, the, the the pulses. So this pulse, the first one or the second one, is derived from the previous uh, I mean, uh, generator, and the current one, this is from the state feedback controller. Let us see what what is this. Okay, so if you see the small period, let's take any small period. Is it over or not? So you see, 
these are so the top one is the pulse generated by uh, the state feedback controller the bottom one is the pulse generated by the previous system so these both are almost same you know uh, the both are almost same even you can even enlarge it and you can see almost same pattern is uh, coming from your uh, um, uh, your uh, previous pwm controller and also state feedback controller okay there are certain issues as i said i couldn't correct because uh, i had no time and the next one what i have taken is i have taken both uh, this is i have taken only the voltage the second case i have taken both the voltage and current as the state variables you know this I, this input the, here you can see there's a multiplexer available from which i have taken the output from the uh, current output and also the voltage output output of the output after the filter or the thing which is coming out of my hp inverter the current and voltage both are taken and fed as the outputs and also as the state variables okay this is what i have done here and let me run this also and see how the pulse are gener pulses are generated and again if you take this scope the one of the inputs is from the pulse with the previous pulse and the other uh, second one is the pulse what is from my state feedback controller so if you insert the state feedback controller you have the state feedback matrix k so you have to take your x y or your current or voltage whatever it may be you decide how the output should be should it, uh, there should be any overshoot or there should not be any overshoot and what should be the settling time everything you can decide based upon that and applying our previous technique you can decide what's your k matrix and enter this k matrix in this block in this block uh, the here, what is over here and then uh, and once it is done and you can uh, do all these uh, interconnections and check the results okay so overall, overall performance i made to uh, analyze uh, but i couldn't but any however i was successful until uh, this uh, generation of pulses okay let me check the pulses this is the comparison of the pulses from uh, uh, previous one and the pulses from uh, the, the, the state feedback controller these two are the uh, things okay now let me check the small portion so what you get will be almost same okay let me take even smaller version okay uh, even even uh, is called on so small variation am i right there are small variations in between the previous and current one we have to sit and analyze okay here the, the, the you have better uh, than I mean, width of uh, pulse width and here you have lesser pulse width and you no know, this this pulse width and this yellow and yellow sorry blue and blue red and red are a bit higher in our uh, state feedback case and the, uh, the performance we have to see as i said i got no time to analyze the performance so which is so when two parameters are included when i include a current also there is a change in the triggering pulse so it may further improve uh, this system performance which is uh, left for analysis okay so uh, likewise so that is that's applicable so likewise you can uh, select your state feedback controller uh, decide what are all your feedback parameters and what should be your uh, your 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 what your your performance criteria and based on that you can select uh, your uh, k matrix design design your k matrix so uh, check the enter the enter the values of k matrix over here and then you can uh, uh, run this okay so this is uh, a crude idea about uh, designing your uh, state feedback controllers for your power harness applications uh, i am not good in power harness had i been not good i could have solved all these things so i was also struggling uh, sometime uh, back to get uh, this output so uh, i was half way through only honestly speaking uh, but i am sure that uh, if you proceed definitely you can get a better approach uh, uh, using the state feedback controller uh, because if you see the research articles to the best of my conscious knowledge Uh, only lesser articles are available based on uh, state feedback control but if you take your matlab and if you go refer your uh, examples so go to your uh, reference section if you go for examples there are plenty of examples uh, given uh, to make your torque control to make your speed control uh, there are 20 or 30 examples are available using your state feedback method okay so you can refer to the, those methods it is still a powerful method 
and you can try uh, i mean implementing this state feedback method for one of your uh, proposed uh, systems and check the analysis and the advantage of this is it is much simpler than your complex uh, this system so you have to measure omega you will have to modulate in the kunda all those things you have to decide that that is uh, you, you can you can overcome those complications and you can decide your uh, a better state feedback a better control using your state feedback that's all from my side so with this uh, i couldn't uh, fully uh, because i had one more uh, item also that is uh, how to develop your state model for your single phase uh, full bridge converter how to yesterday i had a discussion with uh, rb sel kumar sir he is one of my scholars for seeing phd and we have seen how to develop the state model so from the um, different different sections we calculated the current and voltages from those uh, we developed a block diagram model from the block diagram model we developed uh, the state model uh, the one thing we where we, uh, where we left out is uh, this uh, firing circuit okay that could that could be uh, obtained from this part okay so that uh, boring that we have all completed the design of that but we couldn't present because of the time constraints and other uh, issues which are coming over to me uh, so with this uh, i thank uh, the participants for their patience hearing despite my interruptions due to um, the known reasons because uh, sindhu sir uh, that was calling me in between i had to attend that also and uh, despite all my odd things uh, i have made uh, the presentation which may not be as per your expectations which were not satisfy your expectations but very sorry for this uh, but uh, i have done my duty to the best of my knowledge thank you thank you very much please thank you so much sir thank, thank you so much thank you sir thank you. Thank you. sir ஒன்னாக <laughs> 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 Ramp. These are all the four inputs. And if you take impulse, it is one. If you take Laplace transform, and if you take step, it is one by s. Uh, ramp, it is one by s square, and parabolic, it is one by s cube. And if you want to test a system, obviously you may have to, um, uh, because if you take any practical system or any practical input, we can classify that practical input as the combination of uh, these four inputs. Okay, or one of the inputs or combination of these four inputs. so if you want to analyze a system uh, you know you know our our analysis is meant only for linear systems so you can uh, with the four different inputs you can analyze the system and you can add uh, the responses of these four inputs to get your overall response that's what we normally do in uh, this uh, linear system analysis so it is uh, highly time consuming and not possible to test your system response with all the four inputs so if we uh, uh, and of course if we take your impulse step uh, ramp and uh, impulse uh, if you take impulse say it is one if you take ramp it is one by s so in laplace transform one by s is integration so if you integrate impulse you will get your uh, step if you integrate your step you will get your uh, ramp if you integrate ramp you will get your uh, parabolic so one by s one by s square and by s cube okay so the just take response of uh, one input and you can integrate or differentiate to get the response of other inputs uh, in, in this space you can i mean you can you i mean you are your error coefficients that is uh, position error velocity error and uh, and uh, acceleration error coefficient these coefficients are comes in hand, uh, come in handy so you take the response of one of the inputs and you can analyze the system response, response for the remaining inputs out of this uh, a much simpler and more practical input is your step that's why we go first thank you sir uh, one more question sir please sir uh, 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 very uh, from saravanan ji very good open sir uh, we are using matlab software for control system concept simulation is there any other software tool is available to simulate the same look sir lab is also available lab is one of the powerful software but then may not support directly your control systems but it is meant for control lab view to the best of my knowledge lab view is another powerful system i know only these two sir okay sir okay sir thank you sir there are, there are a lot of messages in chat box so the wonderful session particle session uh, given nice feedback when the chat box itself sir. 
how to see the chat box sir sir in uh, so right and the oh, okay got count the 89 89 nearby okay okay sir thank you sir thank you so once again i thank all the participants uh, for their for able uh, uh, and tolerating me due to during my inter- during a form interruptions and i thank uh, the organizers for this wonderful opportunity thanks and have a nice day and as i said please uh, stay safe that's very important thank you thank you all okay thank you so much sir karunya yes sir on behalf of dr ng pinchar of technology and department of electrical and electronics engineering i give a very heartfelt vote of thanks to the resource person dr c vivekanandan sir for sharing his thought which will be definitely encouraging us in our future events sir your thoughts have enlightened our mind thank you sir for your precious time on thought provoking presentation thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you thank you so much sir thank you sir participants can you fill the feedback link post in the chat box लड़ जा मैं कि मैं तेरे को क्या पूछा मैं क्या लेटी जा तू जवाब क्या दे रही है पर सुनी तो लायक रखकर बंदा मैं क्या लेटी जा तू मैं क्या पूछो मैं लग गई पूरा लफाफा दे आना ना पूरा लफाफा खाई होना है चक्कर पारे दा ओके सर प्लीज जिनेल पापा आया था ना जेमसन ले आया था ना पूरा का ही होना दिख रहा है तो उसे भी पता कि थी खाते लोग में चुकना किसने मैं आरी बड़ी बच्चा वो इतना भी मार दा अगर सर ये मैं म्यूट ही मार रहा हूँ इसमें रिमूव नो प्रॉब्लम नहीं वो इतना भी मार दा कौन कुछ बाबू 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 इन नहीं दिता सारे पप्पू गली वो पप्पू नहीं दिखता जैसा रहेंगे एक बारी मक्खन जैसे नहीं लेते हैं ये सारी अनिश्चित बात है यार मुझे पप्पू ना दी 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 मार सकता है सर 
முடிஞ்சதே இல்லீங்களா மேம் முடிஞ்சது மேம் முடிஞ்சது மேடம் ஃபீட்பேக் ஓகே ஓகே ஃபீட்பேக் கிடைக்கும்ங்களா ஒருத்தன் கக்கா ஒருத்தன் கக்கா கூட கக்கல கூட கக்கல சார் ரெகுலரா ஒன் செஷன் தானே இந்த செஷன் மட்டும் தானே சார் ஓகே ஓகே சார் இன்னும் ஒரு நாள் இருக்கு நாளைக்கு மட்டும் இருக்கு இல்லைங்களா ஓகே ஓகே சார் ஓகேங்க சார் Hello sir there's uh, some issue sir okay sir left eye clean sir left eye clean suppose for a uh, dc source or any source you can